I want a divorce. You can't have one. When a couple starts keeping score, there is no winning. It's only degrees of losing. I am the one who found this house. I bought everything in it with my money. It's a lot easier to spend than it is to make it, honey bun. You might not have made it if not for me, sweet cakes. We haven't passed any point of no return. I have. We have a strong hunger for the rewards of a lasting, soul-satisfying relationship, but a lot of that has to do with who do you choose to be in your life? Do you want them or need them? And do you really know what love is? Here to explain, welcome relationship expert and author of Break Up, Don't Break Down, Dr. Diavon Young. Hi. Uh, you oftentimes hear people say, I just can't find a good man. And your question back to them is... Where are you looking? Because there are lots of good men out there. I'm a good man. Yeah. So, and I'm not the only one. So that, that is a myth. Sometimes we try to choose something that's not good for us based on our background, our family history. Isn't it always easier to return to the familiar? People, uh, and it's been said, I even heard a friend of mine say that another friend of mine said this morning, you married your father. Yeah. or you marry your mother. So what we do is get to something that we've been acquainted with, hoping that it gives us a comfort, but it's a false sense Yeah, because if it was a good mom, good dad yeah. relationship, one thing, but if not, for example, for you, mm -hmm. uh, you had kind of a tough time emotionally growing up. You were yeah. adopted. Not that that in, in and of itself mm -hmm. is an issue, but sometimes there's that, that insecurity of feeling, was I worthy of being loved if my parents gave me away? And you equated sex with love. Definitely. And when you try to find a, an external solution to an internal problem, that's not going to work. Yeah. In fact, it, there was a, I'm going to try to find out a way to put this delicately. Um, you were with uh, um, a group of women. <laughs> yeah. And you said okay. to yourself, I have never felt so lonely in my life. Well, it was one of those situations where there were three pillows on my bed, to put it mildly. Okay. <laughs> and, and when you wake up and you realize that, you know what, I deserve so much better than this. Uh, what most men would find to be the epiphany of virility and masculinity led me to find out that, you know what, Mr. Big Shot, you're not all that big uh, emotionally and mentally. And what I found from that experience is that real authentic love is something that begins with you loving yourself. Mm. And Mickey, for you, you grew up with a father who had some demons of his own, who was an alcoholic, and so you grew up and married. Mickey, you grew up and married. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and you grew up and married someone who was also an alcoholic because there's this idea of trying to fix it. Okay, so I want to uh, hold that point right there. And uh, we have some breaking news that is happening in downtown that we were going to go to in just a couple of minutes. But, um, so, but the point that I wanted to make with that was that you, it's almost like you try to grow up and fix that relationship. Well, there's the unconscious dimension of what motivates people to do their work or to reenact the damage from the earlier parts of their lives. And so we all do it. You know, you, when, you get, when you are attracted to a partner, you're really attracted to their representative. You find out the real stuff later. Yeah. And all that's right. where the work starts. Okay. We're going to go ahead and uh, go to 11 News anchor Christine Haas right now. With Welcome back to Great Day. We are talking about relationships. And earlier we were talking about why is it that so many of us choose the wrong relationship? A lot of that has to do with how you grew up, girls' relationship with their father, boys' relationship with their mother in particular. All right, now let's talk about how to fix that, where to begin. And you say do an autopsy on your attitude, lifestyle, and behavior. First, if you want something to change or the things that you look at to change, change the way that you look at things. That begins by examining not only who you are today, but what made you that way? What uh, started those triggers? What prompted those responses? And you're going to find that most of those things you either learn through modeling or conditioning. Yeah. All right. And also put your toxic relationships behind you because that can make so many people so bitter. And they keep talking about that bad relationship, which they chose. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we got to admit that we choose those relationships. Yeah. I had a lady, I was doing a lecture at one point. And this lady says, well, the last four men I've dated, I, they were this and they were that. And I said, well, dear, you know the one thing they all had in common? You. 
So when I told her, yeah, I mean, say it, seriously. Yeah. So when I told her that, uh, you know, she sat there with her mouth open, and what I had to let her know is that if you want something different, why don't you make a fresh start and quit recycling old people, situations, and circumstances? Yeah, yeah, their names may be different, their jobs may be different, all that stuff may be different, but they're still, oftentimes, I know for me, early mm -hmm. on, I was dating the emotionally unavailable person mm -hmm. and banging my head up against the wall, so I had to change that. Uh, after divorce and breakups, it's not the end of the world. But how many of you went, ah, right? It was like it was the end of the world. It's the beginning. If anything, this is an opportunity for you to take uh, inventory of your life and realize that these things that have happened in your life are positioning you, preparing you for your future. If you keep going through the same thing over and over again and not learning from it, you know, there's that old saying that only a what? Who does the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. So this time, start different and you will end different. Yeah, in that sense, I think bad relationships aren't bad uh, if you take from it what you learned about yourself in them. All right, don't accept mediocrity and negativity as status quo. Why should you? Mediocrity is, is the worst of the best and the best of the, I mean, it's the best of the worst and the worst of the best. You yeah. know what I mean? So if you are going to have something in your life that's meaningful, expect more and you will receive more. Okay. The opposite of the woman who always says, or the man who always says, I can't find a good, you know, partner, is uh, the person who says, well, if a man wants to be with me, he has to put me in a Mercedes. He has to do, I actually heard this the other day at the hair mm -hmm. salon. She's like, he has to put me in a Mercedes, a big house, a all those external things. And then the question that I came back with is, and what are you bringing to the table? Well, obviously, if you stay in a, if you bake something too long, it shrinks, including the brain. So sometimes <laughs> what we should not do is have ourselves with these expectations of what are you giving, what are you giving, what are you giving. Good relationships are a result of good teamwork. Men marry their best friends, and more than anything else, they do not want someone that is coming to the table with a group of friends or negativity. So tell your friends to take a hike and tell the negativity to go bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, stop dating what you're used to. Mr. Wrong is what you keep finding because he's who you keep attracting to. We talked a little bit about that, uh, but some of your topics Top five things of kind of the roadmap to redirect is create a realistic agenda, trade in change for transformation, cut ties with negative influence, put dates on your goals, and take a fresh step daily. Now you talk about putting dates you read on a your really goals. Good book. <laughs> right, I did. Yeah. It's yours. <laughs> right, but um, um, putting uh, dates on your goals. Uh, you know, someone earlier asked us about how do you start dating again, especially in middle age. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing is this: if you want to convert an idea to a plan. It's a four-letter word and not that word. It's date. <laughs> yeah. You, you put a date on it. The second thing is f go to the places where someone's personality is incidental to the place that you're going. Meaning if you want someone that takes good care of themselves, go to the gym. Go, you know, yeah. go and if you want someone that's nurturing and empathetic and compassionate, Find somebody that volunteers their time in a social service situation. So you're already starting off with something. Yeah, you're starting off you where do. you have evidence. Yeah. Remember, evidence that this person possesses that which you seek. Yeah, because I went to a young people's club not long ago, and I walked in, and somebody was like, "Hey, JJ, your mama's here." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I know I can't do the clubs anymore. All right, <laughs> Dr. Devon <laughs> Young, thank you very much thank for you. our tip. Whether you're ending your relationship or getting back into the dating game, uh, Dr. Young can help. Find out more about him and how to get his book at our website, greatdayhouston.com. He has a series of books. Okay, and someone in our audience is going home with a